Now to your community focus. We are talking live with Rhode Island Lieutenant Governor Sabina Mato. She joins us now live via Zoom this afternoon. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Kim and Brian, for having me here with you. Thank you for this opportunity. So as we've been reporting, Lieutenant Governor, the breaking news today that the head of the Rhode Island Department of Health, Dr. Nicole Alexander Scott, stepping down. There's been this notion that there was tension between her and Governor Dan McKee. Where do you think that idea came from? First of all, I just want to take this opportunity to thank Dr. Nicole Alexander Scott for the way how she guided us, all of us, during the pandemic. I remember at the beginning of the pandemic, I was always looking forward to seeing um, the governor, Raimondo, and her. Um, and I want to thank her for her leadership and the way how she comforted all of us um, during a stressful time. And she always did that with so much poise and class in, in with a level of expertise and reassurance for all of us in such a critical moment where we were all uh, still trying to figure out what was going on and what was happening. So I just wanna say uh, to her on behalf of all Rhode Islanders, thank you for, for your service. And as a woman and a, as a one, woman of color, seeing her leadership and and her um, the way how she uh, handled herself, I'm, I was so proud of her. And I just want to thank her for everything that she has done. Um, with your question, I honestly, I don't think that there is uh, much in here. I think that the director's role as the Department of Health Director is to push and advocate for the um, health and safety at all levels. And um, the role of the governor um, for Governor McKee, the same way how it was with Governor Raimondo, is to balance out the information that the governor gets from the different directors and to make decisions that are gonna um, help the state of Rhode Island based on that information. And who would you like to see take her place? Uh, so right now, uh, there have not been any conversations about who will take her place. Um, those are um, real uh, big shoes to fill. I'm looking forward to having more conversations with the governor and learn to uh, where, what he's leaning towards um, with this decision. Uh, a few weeks ago, you tested positive for COVID. You, you, made, you made that public. Mm -hmm. um, we hear such varying mm -hmm. degrees of symptoms when people test positive. What was your experience like? Yeah. So yeah. So I made it public because of a couple of reasons. I don't want. I didn't want you guys in the media to think that I was hiding it. <laughs> and also, I think I wanted to use this as an opportunity to educate uh, our community um, out there to let them know that this is a, it's a real um, um, issue. Um, in my household, um, it was my daughter uh, who tested positive first, and then after it was me. And this could happen to anybody out there. And I'm, I'm very, I feel very confident that I, I have been able to overcome um, this illness and I still have some um, consequences on coughing and congestion. But I think um, being vaccinated and being boosted honestly helped me a lot to be able to overcome this illness. You have, as you were just mentioning, been very prominent in advocating access to the vaccine and also testing opportunities um, that have been to communities that have been really vaccine hesitant specifically uh, or lower mm -hmm. vaccine rates. Are you seeing progress with those populations? We're making progress, but uh, there are many individuals that had made this decision that they don't want to get the vaccine. And I have made the decision that I'm not gonna give up on them. You know, I'm gonna continue to ask them to look at the data. Not if they don't wanna believe on what we're telling us, they can look at the data themselves. If they look at the numbers of individuals that end up in the hospital, uh, the majority of the cases are for individuals that have not been vaccinated. So I will continue to make sure that there is access to the vaccine, that we have vaccine available in the different communities for at the moment when someone that has been hesitant about uh, the decision of getting the vaccine, once they decide that they want to get it, they have access to it and it's available to them. Speaking of vaccines and vaccine hesitancy, the Providence City Council is expected to vote tomorrow on an ordinance that would block Mayor Jorge Alorza from being able to fire unvaccinated members of the Providence Police Department. Providence is your home. You served on the council there. Would you be voting in favor of that ordinance tomorrow? 
If we had been in the city council at this moment as the president of the city council, most likely we would not be having that meeting tomorrow because I would have been sitting down with the mayor and talking to him about a better way how to address this challenge. We have to keep in mind that as of right now, we have about 80 um, officers that have not taken the vaccine. And we cannot make a decision to say that we're gonna fire 80 officers in, in without having a plan, a public safety plan that are going to ensure that the city of Providence is safe and that whenever a, a constituent, a taxpayer, an individual, a resident of the city of Providence calls uh, because needs uh, the help and the assistance of the police, there should be a police officers available to respond to that call. So I will be having a conversation with the mayor, trying to find other ways in which um, uh, I have more compliance from the police officers, having more conversations with the leadership of the police union uh, before getting to this moment. Lieutenant Governor Sabina Matos, that is all the time we have today. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you so much for this opportunity.